Alright, so I can't do a series on lighting without revisiting the topic of NeoPixel LEDs. And these come in single LEDs, they come in strips, they come in rings, they come in matrices, they come in flexi versions, they come in these uh, individual ones strung together. This is not an official Adafruit product, but you can get it on Amazon. Uh, just look for WS2812s or addressable RGB LEDs. And they also come in strips that have a flexible waterproof silicone coating on them, which is a sleeve that you can pull off, but it's also sealed at the ends so that you can have a whole waterproof strip if you want. I've programmed this to use a button to control four different lighting modes on the NeoPixel ring, and you can find the tutorial for that on Hackster. It's one of my old Hackster 101 tutorials, which is a great resource if you're looking to learn the basics of electronics for makers. Search for Hackster 101, or go to the community, or click on one of the tags on one of the projects, and you'll be able to find the whole series. The cool thing about NeoPixels is that as they come in a ton of different form factors, uh, they still are controlled the same way. So if you have a bunch of these individual ones hooked up in series, or if you have a ring, or if you have a strip, they're all going to take the same code and run with it. Let me plug this into my 5 volt phone charger, which is my power source. And once I push the button, it starts doing its color wipe function. If I push it again, it starts doing warm white. Then a dimmer all white, sort of a cool white setting that has more blue in it. And then again, a warm light that has more red. So this has the red, green, and blue channels on, but it's a little more orangey. And then if I hit it again, then we go back to the full brightness white color. This is a great little tool for photography or videos on the go. At this point, I want to point you to my previous video because we just talked about switches and buttons, all these different tools to build your circuit with exactly how you want the control system to work. And for that, I want to point you to this SparkFun tutorial by Jimbo, which takes you all the way from what is a switch through different types of switches and how they're represented and you can Google for them. Particularly the pulls and throws and open and closed section is really useful for me as a maker. That and the momentary switches section. So the button that I have on my ring light controller is a momentary switch, also known as a tactile switch. There are also other types of momentary switches that aren't buttons, such as some types of joysticks, but in those cases, this actually has some little limit switches inside of it. And there are also some types of joysticks that use potentiometers instead of buttons to determine where precisely the joystick is. So all of these are considerations if you're defining your control system for your LEDs. NeoPixels require a data pin because they're controlled programmatically. You have to have an Arduino or another controller hooked up to these. In this case, I'm using a DigiSpark, which is an AT tiny programmable chip, which you can get on its own, but it's kind of a pain to hook up the circuit to program it. The DigiSpark adds on a little USB connection and some power management and some little pin breakouts and stuff like that to make it easier on you. So what happens if you don't put data in with one of these? Spoiler alert, it's not very exciting. Oh, look at that! Nothing! <laughs> Sometimes you'll get like a brief flash of light or something, or like one LED will come on or something. Even if your strip has been functioning normally, and then it stops in the middle of an animation or something, then you should check to see if your data pin has become disconnected. Because that is one of the key symptoms. Shine on. 